Okay, guys, so gradients are in essence a combination of two or more colors that transition smoothly between them depending on the position and the settings you give them. Similar to solid colors, you can apply them to fields or strokes to any object in Figma, and it's a great way to breathe some life into your designs if you don't want to go for a solid color. So first we will be covering the basics, we will be checking the gradient presets Figma already has and then we will jump into mesh gradients. We will divide that into a simpler way to create them, uh, which is using a plugin I will show you, it's, it will come very handy for some situations and then uh, we will try to create those mesh gradients manually because this will allow us to animate them later. So without further ado, let's go! To use gradients in Figma, start by selecting the layer and then access the fill or color menu. Click on here to edit and then change it from solid color to a gradient. And it's as simple as that. The first one you see is the linear one, and then from this drop down menu, you can access radial, angular, or diamond. So the linear gradient arranges colors in a straight line. This is the most widely used type of gradient, and you can modify each of the colors by clicking the stops. So I can make this any color and I can also adjust its opacity. You can also select where the gradient starts and ends by moving the stops and you can add a new stop by just clicking in the bar and you can alter again both the opacity and the color of the stop. Additionally, the gradient handles can also be manipulated on the canvas so you can control it from the shape itself. So moving to other types of gradients, the radial one originates from a center point and expands outward into all directions. You can alter the same variables as in the linear and you can also alter the shape of the ellipse. The angular gradient progresses clockwise and it completes a full 360 rotation connecting both ends. You can edit the radius, the center point and the shape of the ellipse. And lastly, we have the diamond gradient. It works pretty much as a radial one, but it takes the shape of a diamond instead of a circle. Uh, you can both edit the stops from the shape and also the form of the diamond. After you invest time perfecting your gradients and creating a library of them, uh, make sure to save them as styles. So you go to the libraries menu, add and save that as a new gradient. Okay guys, so moving to the mesh gradients, I'm gonna show you a very great tool that will be very useful. If you need a very quick and easy way to make uh, a gradient, this will create it for you. The only downside to it is that it creates the gradient in a picture format, so it's not a vector, and this means you won't be able to animate it later. There's a couple of these gradient plugins, but I recommend mesh gradients. You can download that from the community. You can right click plugins and find more plugins. I have it already, so I'm just gonna. So this makes it very simple to create very awesome gradients. You just have to pick the mesh. If it's two by two, three by three, four by four, and so on. You can edit your color. So you can copy your color codes from the, from your color styles, you can paste them in there. And as simple as that, you will have a very awesome gradient to use. Additionally, you can also access a very cool collection of gradients that are already made for you. So if you want to use one of those. Okay, and finally, let's check out the manual way to create a mesh gradient. Um, this is going to be a very simple one just to show you the process. And, and at the end, I'm going to show you how to animate it. So the first step is to create your shapes. For that I'm gonna use also a plugin but you can actually construct that with the pen tool with no problem it's just it's just saves some time this plugin is named blobs you can also download that from the community I'm gonna insert a couple of blobs I think that's okay okay with my shapes done I'm gonna create a, a frame just to put them inside of it let me give that a feel so you can easily see that okay so my first step is done I'm gonna move those shapes a bit around. Remember, this is something that is supposed to be very organic, so, so don't spend much time um, kind of trying to make it perfect because actually imperfection will make this look kind of more organic and cooler. Okay, so then we're gonna define our colors. I already got some colors set up on my styles. Green. Uh, let's give the, the background maybe a a blue color same as one of the shapes so the so the transitions look smoother okay 
then the third step is to add the blur effect so you're gonna select you're gonna individually select all your shapes go to the effects uh, go to the effects menu and change from drop change it change it from drop shadow to layer blur edit it and you're gonna make it very very blurry to the point they kind of merge with each other maybe 150 in here you can further edit your shapes to kind of look the way you want them to remember this is a very quick um, organization I'm doing but you can explore it as much as you want so until you get the effect you want to get uh, okay and the optional step the final step is the animation so let me bring that into here just so I can see the frames okay so what I'm gonna do is copy this a couple times so each time I, I copy it I'm gonna move stuff around so try to try to move it in a in a way that it's kind of uh, it looks kind of like a sequence and you can let you can let your shapes get out of your frame so an easy way to get them in there is just cutting and copying them with the frame selected so try to move this try to give it some movement that looks kind of of harmonic or in a in a sequence i'm going to show you what i'm talking about so you see i moved the i moved the purple one to the from the bottom left corner to the upper left corner and then the green to the the green that is on the top left to the top right and so forth and so on so try to give that some movement i'm gonna actually move this into here you can change the shapes the sizes you can you can do whatever you want but uh, try to explore with some harmonious movement so it looks smoother at the end in the animation okay when you're happy with your frames you just gotta access the prototype menu and start connecting the frames so let me show you the settings you're gonna you're gonna want to change change this from on click to after delay so it automatically changes set that to one millisecond so after a delay of one millisecond uh, we're gonna make it navigate to the next frame let's set this to dissolve let's set this to is in and out and 5000 milliseconds so that's five second animation and you will notice if you already have that set up it's gonna it's gonna replicate most of the settings but you're gonna have to change again from on click to after delay so make that a couple times and finally to close the loop connect the last frame to the first one and let's check how that looks So you can see it's a pretty smooth animation, it looks pretty cool. Um, you can alter the settings, you can make it slower, you can make it faster. Um, and this is obviously something you can use as a background in anywhere. Um, I've seen it used actually in elements like buttons. Uh, it's a really versatile way to use gradients. And if you animate it, it's gonna breathe some life into your design. So I hope this was helpful, guys. I know this was a short one, but yeah, I just really wanted to cover anything you needed to know about gradients in Figma and see you in the next one. Thank you.